Sorry for not uploading since last year. The Republic of East Florida was also known as the Republic of the Floridas, or the Territory of East Florida. The Republic of East Florida used a flag known as the Patriot Flag with a national motto inscribed on it. Here it is. The motto means the safety of the people, the supreme law. The United States had their eye on the Floridas before the Republic of East Florida. They wanted the Floridas for two reasons. First of all, it was seen as the only means to obtain insurance from Spain for their plundering of U.S. commerce and for the suppression of the right to deposit at New Orleans. The other being the geographic location made it a matter of national security if a foreign power, such as Great Britain, acquired the Floridas, especially as the War of 1812 was brewing. This wasn't unwarranted as a resident saw 36 British warships in Fernandina once. All this led to the passing of a secret act of Congress on January 15, 1811. In January of 1811, General George Matthews and Colonel John McKee were appointed as commissioners to carry into effect provisions of the secret bill of Congress enacted on the 15th. The bill stipulated that the president was authorized to take possession of the Floridas under two circumstances. First, in case any arrangement has been made with the local authority of said territory to deliver it to the United States. Second, being in the event of any attempt by any foreign government to occupy any part of the territory. Now, Colonel John McKee did not ever act under the commission but General George Matthews did take to Florida and lived in a home in St. Mary's, Georgia. The general soon realized that voluntary surrender from the local government would not happen and that the governor of East Florida was loyal to the Spanish crown. Because of this fact and the want to do something, General George Matthews decided to create a rebellion in the territory, creating a new local authority to surrender the territory to the U.S. The only issue with this plan being that residents of the territory were content as cotton and timber were profitable. The town of Fernandina on Amelia Island was a neutral port that was left to itself. There was no oppression to be liberated from. However, General George Matthews gave the impression that he was a U.S. agent and consequently authorized to take the possession of East Florida. Not only this, but if they helped in rebelling, they would be rewarded, and if they opposed in any way, it would displease the U.S. government. Not only that, but the general promised support from the U.S. Navy and Army, along with arms once the rebels established a temporary government and gave the U.S. cession of the territory. Keep in mind that most of the residents of the northern part of East Florida were Americans who once after hearing the promise of defense and support, organized a rebellion. It was at this point when a party of men, partially supplied by the U.S. arsenal at Point Peter, assembled at Rose's Bluff. It was around the 14th of March, 1812, when they raised the Patriot flag or a standard of revolt against the government of East Florida. They selected temporary officials under the direct supervision of General Matthews himself, as he was present in person. General McIntosh was made governor, and Colonel Richard Ashley made military chief. The rebels went down to Fernandina to attack it. Accounts of the party ranged from 250 to 357 men, with not over 50 being Spanish subjects. The rest were volunteers from the U.S. Fernandina was under the command of Don José López and was defended by a garrison of only 10 people. On the 15th, they were sent an ultimatum by Colonel Richard Ashley, but Fernandina was not surrendered. On the morning of the 16th of March, nine U.S. gunboats landed in front of the town, with the official reason being to stop smuggling. Their landing, however, was hostile with guns loaded facing the city to cover the landing of the Patriots. They were under the command of Commodore Campbell. When Don José López saw that the Patriots were supported by U.S. forces, 
he surrendered Fernandina to the Patriots by marching out with his 10 men and giving up his sword. The next day, after a U.S. detachment from Point Peter arrived, the Patriot government then surrendered the town to General Matthew on behalf of the U.S. government. The U.S. flag was raised and the Patriot flag lowered. U.S. troops soon occupied the town. On their march throughout the country, the Patriot troops were a little ahead of the U.S. troops. They would take the towns, raise the Patriot flag, and as the local authority, would then surrender the territory to the U.S. The U.S. flag would then be raised. They proceeded like this until reaching St. Augustine. They laid siege to it in late March. Note that General Matthew camped and marched with the Patriot leaders. Witnesses state that the Patriot and American troops marched, camped, forged, and fought together. Also note that along the way, efforts were made for locals to join the Patriot force by both persuasion and threats. From rewards of property to the confiscation of it, scouting parties were even sent to kidnap influential residents as camp prisoners until they joined the cause. The approach of the Patriots and Americans to St. Augustine caused panic, with the Spanish governor sending a warning for loyal residents to aid in the defense of the city. The country was marauded by American parties who looted crops, burnt down buildings, stole animals, and plundered every plantation and farm. Know that when the U.S. government was informed of the actions of General Matthews and the U.S. troops in East Florida, they revoked the powers of General Matthews and replaced him with Governor Mitchell of Georgia to withdraw the U.S. troops. Not only that, but to restore all taken Spanish posts in Amelia Island back to Spanish authorities. Note that General Matthews took this personally and went to D.C. to confront the president, but he died of illness in Augusta on his way. In a letter from then Secretary of State James Monroe, Governor Mitchell was instructed to protect the interests of those who helped General Matthews and to come to an understanding with the Spanish governor of East Florida. The province was finally evacuated of U.S. troops in May 1813. I love seeing the similarities between this and the Republic of West Florida, how they both wanted to be annexed by the United States though I'd say West Florida did it more sincerely, while the Republic of East Florida was more a front for Floridian shenanigans. It's really interesting to see when Florida was the frontier for American expansion.